Okay, page um, Kufchas. Sorry? That's correct. There's, there's consequences to actions. Mitzvahs minu melech. By the way, Mitzvahs minu melech, leman is melech mi Yisrael, to be man, to uh, appoint a king from amongst Klal Yisrael, Shanemar, same Tosim Alech HaMelech. He needs Tzarech Lohavin, we have to understand, the Mashakots of Shmuel Al Bnei Yisrael, that which Shmuel got angry on Bnei Yisrael, Kishashal, when they asked of him, Tanal Lano Melech, when they asked for a king. The Gam Hashem Yisbarach Amar Le'inos HaShem told Shmuel at that time, Ki Le'o Ishcha Ma'asu Hulu, they didn't, uh, so they didn't disdain you. They're not. They're not being moyes in you. But kiyum oisi ma'aso. Hashem says that their uh, their request for a king is their way of saying they're not interested in me. It's not that they're not interested in you. Don't take it personally. Because Shmuel at the time was the leader. Hashem says it's not about you. It's about me. Mahachari afaza. What's this? We're, we're, what's the source of this anger? Halizui mitzvasa yizbarach. This is the chamitzva. Three mitzvahs the Yidin were commanded when they entered Eretz Yisrael. One of them is Laman is Laham Melach, is to to appoint a king. There were three mitzvahs. There was uh, making a king, appointing a king, and then there was Mechia Samalik, and uh, Binyan and Beis Hamikdash. Those are the three mitzvahs the Yidin were commanded to in that order, which is talking the way it happened. The first uh, Shaul, and then was appointed as a king, and then there was the mitzvah of. Destroying a Malik, and then they built the, the Beis Hamikdash. So this is the Shaila, and this is a I mean, Hadvarim Yiduim. This is a very, uh, a very known Shaila. Rambam speaks about it in Parsha Shevetim. The Barbanel talks about it. I mean, it, it uh, it's such a glaring question that we have. There, on one hand, there's a mitzvah of Mini Melach, and the Ebrisher says same Tosim Melach and Melach. At the same time. When the Yidin actually went and they asked for a king, so there was this blow up, a blow up on the, on the part of, uh, of Shmuel, Amal, Shmuel Anavi, and then on, on the behalf of the Abishter. But And the interesting thing is, on the one hand, we don't understand what, 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 what was wrong with the Yidin. We don't understand why did Shmuel get upset and why did Hashem get upset. <coughs> and the third question is, although I'm unstated over here, is that why, if, if it was Taka, Dover built Yirotzi, if it was Taka, um, the request was, for whatever reason, was out of place, and obviously it was. There was something wrong with the request. They should not have requested a king. Then why did Hashem acquiesce that there shouldn't be a king? He should have said, no, you have your leader. Shmuel Hanavi, he's your leader, and therefore... Uh... So you have all these questions. And different, the, the Farshim match different answers. If I remember correctly, the Ramban says that the Torah, the this is like one of those mitzvahs, which is uh, you know, like almost like Dibra Torah Keneged Yitzhahara. Sometimes... Uh, Hashem says that when you go into to the land and va'marta and you will say asima alecha mel asima alay melach, not that that's the way it should be. You're going to say that, so okay, same toss. I'll, I'll, I'll allow, I'll allow the king. It is a mitzvah, no. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is a mitzvah. So the, most of the other mafarshim, they answer is that. Uh, the answer, the answer is that this. Oh, they, they, this kol agoyim asher svivoisai. That was the big problem. That the Yidden came along to 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 to, uh, to, show, to Shmuel and they said we want a king like all other nations around us. Mm-hmm. And that was the problem. You want to uh, say why you want because you want to be like uh, you want to be like everyone else. But the, but the, but the, but then the problem goes back that if you look in Parsha Shaftim, the Taka says that it says v'amarta simolai mel kol agoyim. So the Chayyim that seems to be a part, but that's what so that's what they're about. But it's something. But the, again, the consensus of the Mefarshim is that, that the, the problem lies in those words. Um, that's a little obvious. In other words, it didn't have the proper intentions. And the, the, the Mimer, by the way, is also going to go along those same lines, but it's going to explain it obviously on a much deeper level. Why is it that Goyim need a king? And why is it that Yidin need a king? And why, what was the Chesar and different Yidin asking for a king the way that the Goyim wanted it? Uh, we'll find out that it's, it's at least three different kings, maybe four different kings. When, when, things, when, when you can complicate things, why keep it simple? What is the Nakuda of Mini Melech? Why is it a mitzvah? Why is it important to have a Melech? 
who shebeival yodei. And by the way, if I can, uh, if I can add in a question which the Tzemach Tzedek did not ask, but a question which people of the 21st century ask, why b'chal do we need a king? The whole, the whole uh, notion and institution of monarchy seems to be um, seems to be absolutely archaic. It seems to be a you know, an enabling the an enabling dictatorship and uh, and tyrants, yeah. and you have to you have to realize that in, in halacha, the rule of the king was absolute. Now, there was there were there checks and balances? Yes. Was there Sanhedrin? Yes. Was he allowed to go against Torah mitzvahs? No, he was not allowed. Mm-hmm. And that's by the way a chiddush, and that's stuck in, in a way that's different than that of of the of the Jewish concept of monarchy than the Jewish concept because it was always. That the king and all other was uh, was above and beyond reproach and above and beyond the law. He created the law, as opposed to the Yiddish king did not create the law. In other words, yes, he was a lot, he he had latitude to create certain laws, mm-hmm. but Lepoel he was bound to keep the Torah and mitzvahs like everyone else was. And as the Torah says, Chuka achas hagar. In other words, in the ancient world, there was this uh, there was this caste system and different laws applied to different uh, levels in the social ladder. And the king was on the top, and the king wasn't answerable to anyone. And in, the, in, 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 in halacha, it's not the way. A king can even be brought to Sanhedrin. In other words, and so practically speaking, it wasn't done by Malchi Yisrael, by Malchi Yehuda was. But at the same time, the laws that govern king, uh, kings, are made, if a king tells you, go there, and you don't go there, it's Tzachi of Misa. Imagine that today in America, you know, that uh, Trump says, go here, you know, call me, do this. Or, <laughs> right? <laughs> In other words, the president really doesn't have any right to enact any laws or anything. If you see disrespectful in front of the king, it's a small thing. It's a chi of misa. So it's something which is difficult for us to relate today. And why talk do we need a king? What's wrong with a democratically uh, elected leadership? Why does Torah, why is it the Torah considered the ideal form of government a monarchy? So, it's not democratic, but technically the king was Right. He was chosen. Correct. He was chosen, not the person that's true. out there. What you're saying is correct. Grabs control. But after the first king, though, isn't it? Lineage? Not only after the first king. Once the king is the king, oh, okay, but it's not. The, it's not no, no more picks. It's that's the correct. Lineage. It goes to the children. But, he, right. but once the king is king, his rule is absolute. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's taka the the, the a melech and all the dinim of melech apply, and there's a din of meirid b'malchus. Um, but you are right. In, 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 in the in, in the Yiddish way, it has to be Malchus Eberatz and Kiblo Aleim. The man, that's the difference between the. Mm-hmm. As I think I believe the the Eben Ezra and the Gera talk about this. That's the difference between a, Malchu, a Melech and a Moishal. That a Moishal is someone who grabs power, and a Melech, which even the word Melech is Malash and Hamlocha, like um, what? No, imlich bidvisu, like nimlach, to to take advice from, is that uh, they t- it comes from uh, the power is not is given from the people, but still, once the power is given, the power is absolute. Now the Tzemach Tzedek didn't really uh, ask this question, because in his time that wasn't much of a question, because monarchy is pretty much what everyone uh, what everyone had, and that was the presumed. Um, yeah, but it was not no choice. It was uh, the mindset. You go to a person, why do you need a king? What do you mean? You're a person in charge, a person... That, but today, the mindset has changed. But, 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 but back, that begs the question, Taka, why Taka Azeh? <clears throat> today, we don't really have such a... We don't have a concept of a melech. They say that there's a Russian revolution, there was a Chabad Mashpia who was complaining that we lost the, the marshal. Now, when we talk about the Abish, the Abish is a chamelech, right? And now, go explain to someone what a, what a melech is. <clears throat> So why Taki do we need a king? And why is it that uh, the Yiddish guide considers a melech, again, a monarchy, the, the ideal form of governance? So the, the reason for a king who should be al yada yi a Yisrael betelem l'ashem. The nukud of, of a king is that through the king, this is a, you know, it's not a, about a civil matter. To, there's a much deeper nukud than a king. Through the king, the Yidin are battled to Hashem. Ki kol Yisrael tzrichim liyis betelim lamelach. By law, every all the Yidin have to be battled to the Melach. The Sarm lo mashmata and have to do what he says. Bechel Hashem yigzer and everything that he the, everything that he decrees. Kamei shekash kamei shamar Shmuel. Shmuel he warned the people when they came 
and they asked for the king. He told them that you want a king, be say there, and he gave them a whole uh, a whole speech about how uh, you know how the king is good, is how his rule is going to be absolute. He even uh, told them that, uh, that you know you ask for a king, you realize he's going to impose terrible taxes upon you. Ten percent of what you have, you're going to have to give ten. And today we laugh at that, <laughs> but that's. Uh, that was the standard in the old times, 10% taxation. The king himself is a bottle of the The king himself is a bottle to the Ebishter. He says, He says, Ebishter, take a look and see if I am not completely uh, I'm a shava, in other words, uh, equal with the Mamti, Mamti Doimim. Meaning what? What are you going to explain? I know that the bittul Tashem was so deeply um, entrenched and ingrained in his heart. Add to the point that physically he was unable to lift his, his eyes up high. And he wasn't able to lift his heart to be considered abstemitzias. David the Melech says, I am like a doimim she'en li tenua. I have no, uh, I can't move. Otherwise, zewe iker be melech. This is the main thing of a melech. Shemach maza nikra melech. This is why he's called a king. Shuhu merkava la midas malchusa yizbarach. A king is a merkava. Tashem's midas hamalchus of atzil, sheba atzilus. Viyadua, the pirush merkava. What is a merkava? It's a chariot. Hu bechinus habitl. The idea of being a Merkava is the idea of Bittl. Kamei Bittl ha-Merkava l'gabi ha-Rechev. As I state, that you had um, the four Ragli ha-Merkava, as I state in Kabbalah, the four Ragli ha-Merkava are Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and David. They were the four Ragli ha-Merkava. Um, so Avram was the Merkava to midas to mida, to mida, mida chesed of Atzilus, and Yitzchak was the Merkava to midas of uh, Gvur of Atzilus, and Yaakov to Teferis, and David... Who was Malchus? He was a Merkava to midas on Malchus of, of Atzilus, and his Merkava is explained. The this is an absolute bittel, absolute bittel. Kime bittel a Merkava lagabe erechem, just like the bittel of a chariot to the one who's riding it, which the bittel of the chariot is not pshat that when the rider, like imagine like today we use the lesson of a car, the bittel of the car to the driver. It's not pshat that when I move the steering wheel to the right, the car says I really want to move to the left. Well, what can I do? This guy is telling me to move to the right. I'll move to the right. The car has no own rutsen. And a Merkava reaches that Madriga where absolutely no rutsen. David had no rutsen of his own to the point that he was a Merkava to the Ebishtim. Because the king is bottle to Malchus Shemaim, Visral, Betel Lamelach, and the Yidna are bottle to the Melach, Harinimsa to the. So what it turns out that Boival Yadai, that through the king, Israel, Betel Melkusa Yisbarach. Through him, the Yidna are bottled to the Eberstein. It's very simple. If the Yidna are all bottled to the king, and the king is completely bottled to the Eberstein, so by extension, through the, through the king, the Yidna are all bottled, the whole quality is all bottled to the Eberstein. This is the work of the king constantly. Through him, the, the, all, all of the Yidna will be bottled to Hashem. Who bottled? Through the fact that he is bottled to Hashem, the Heim, Betelum, Etzlechu, and they are bottled to him. So the primary function of a king is someone who's completely bottled to Hashem, and by the Yidna. And now we understand why you need a monarchy. Because are we bottled to Donald Trump? It's the opposite way around. He's bottled to us. I know that's. <laughs> no, but meaning what? Politicians, what? He has to pander to us, right? All the focus groups. In a democratically um, elected government, so the leaders aren't really leaders, we're not really bo- and we're not really bottled to them. To the contrary, no, they only re- yeah, he's our shliach, and he reflects what we want, and we can recall him at any moment. Mm-hmm. Only by a melech do we have this idea of absolute bittel. And hey, since the, the, the function of a king is to facilitate our bittel to Hashem, therefore it's imperative that our bittel to him to be a- should be absolute. It's imperative that his bittel to Hashem should be absolute, and then, therefore, by extension, we're all bottled to Hashem. Didn't apply to- no, Shmuel did not have a din of a melech. Someone would have been disrespectful to Shmuel, would not have had a din of a melech. Yeah, but he didn't have the, you know, so you're asking why didn't Shmuel become the melech? No, no, Shmuel to Hashem. Was bottled, but the people weren't bottled to him. He didn't have the din of a melech. 
So that is the 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 the, 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 the what? They talk in dimlism. They're not too bad. They didn't listen. Well, when did they listen to him? I'm saying all the Nevi. Right. <laughs> so this is the primary purpose. You know, so from we understand over here that uh, a king is a, 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 a king by Klali so is entirely different. Now it goes without saying that many of the kings throughout our history did not. Uh, yeah, they did not. Uh, what's we're looking for? They did not uh, reach this, the, the madriga, the ideal of the ideal king, and many of them to the contrary. Although Malchi Yehuda were for the most part were, were tzaddikim, Malchi Yisrael were, were pretty much all their shine. Malchi Yehuda were for the most part tzaddikim, but even Malchi Yehuda had many who did not live, live up to this ideal. But that doesn't change the fact that when Taylor says same tosma lacha melach, this is the nekuda. If we can digress a little, that based on this we understand, we can we can really understand what's going on with. Um, with Shaul, Shaul and David. Because the questions about Shaul and David, before we get into Bechal, why, we, we, we didn't really answer any questions yet. We didn't answer any questions. But we know that Shaul, he made two mistakes, and he was, he was gone. He was, uh, Shaul, by the way, he was a king for all, all of two years. It's hard to, you look, you read the whole story in, in Nach, and you imagine that he was a king for, for 15 years or something. The whole thing with Amalek, and with this, and with that, and with David. Yeah, it was Sachak, it was two years. Yeah. And um, now David also made mistakes, and uh, obviously the primary one was with uh, with Bacheva, for which he was reprimanded greatly. Why are you making with your face? It was a different type of mistake. A different type, exactly. Why, in which way was it a different type of mistake? The Gemara says, Shaul is ba'achas v'leh also leh, and David is b'shtayim v'also leh. Why would, why did David get away with it not, and not, and not Shaul? If you look at the nukuda of both of Shaul's mistakes that he made, Shaul was a tzaddik, he wasn't uh, The first mistake he made was that when he went to go to war against the Plishtim, so David told, so Shmuel told him, you should wait for me for seven days, and after seven days I will come and I will, uh, I will bring the carbonus and then I'll tell you what to do. On the pail, seven days came, and uh, it was the morning, and the people were already scattering, the Shaul's people, because they're waiting, excuse me, for the counterattack, and Shmuel wasn't there. And the people were panicking, and Shaul panicked, and Shaul decided uh, to give in to the, to the people, and he went and he, um, and he, um, he brought the karbanas. And then Shmuel came and gave it to him over the head. And said, I told you to wait. And what's, what's this all about? That was mistake number one. Mistake number two was that um, when he went to fight Amalek, so, David, so, Shaul, so, so uh, Shmuel told him to destroy everyone. And he speared Agag and he speared the animals. With good intentions. His good intentions were and when, to, uh, to bring him as karbanas. And when Shmuel came, so again, Shmuel, that's, that's it, strike two. And you're out. You can't be the king. And Shaul there also. First, Shaul said the whole thing about uh, the the the, um, the carbonus. But then afterwards, he he said, "Ki aresi es ha'am." He says, I, "I fear the nation." And Shmuel Taka, his first words that Shmuel told him says, hey, "Let me tell you what Hashem told me." In katin ata be'enacha, you might be small. Lorei shifte yisal ata. You're now David. On the other hand, what he did with the Riachit, he seems, seems to be much more of a terrible affair than those two things that, 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 that Shaul did. But if you to understand what we're saying over here, what is a king? The gather of a king is that the Yidin are bottled to the king, and the king is bottled to Hashem. Shaul twice displayed that he was bottled. In other words, he wasn't a king. He was like, uh, he was like Trump. Or, I mean, Trump isn't Trump. He, he was bottled to the people. And Shmuel told him, you lost your mandate as a king because you're ice king. You're ice king. In other words, you proved you can't be the king. It's not that you did it, you made a mistake. David made a mistake, but it was not, it was not Negea, it was not Negea to his, uh, no. to the, uh, I forget who, but one of the, one of the Mepharshim brings an, maybe it's the Barbanel, he brings an example, he says that there's a king who had two seifrim, two, uh, two scribes, and one of them was caught with doing a Maisa Nevala, with a, uh, Erva. So he was uh, removed from his position. Another one was caught being Mizayef, uh, forging documents that he was doing. 
also removed. But the other, the first one, after a while, was reinstated. The second one was never reinstated. Why? Because his chet, it was not only against the king, it was in, in the job that he was, he was a scribe. He's forging, that's a, a mm-hmm. meal. The other person, it was a sign thing. David Taka, what he did was wrong, and he was punished for it. Even though the Gemara says the Lechata, the Lechata means he wasn't over the technical issue of Ritzichi, he wasn't over the technical issue of Eish because technically we had the din of Amir Rabalchus, and technically Machava uh, had the din of, uh, was Kal Yitzchel Muhammad's based David, this Get Kisus, Kisul Ishtai, but he did wrong. I mean, it's very clear. You read the Psukim, the way he's chastised and reprimanded and told of the punishments that he will receive. But Shaw, David, David, David had, had bittle to the Ebishter. He made a mistake. And in fact, we also see that, that when, 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 when he came, when Nasan Lavi came to reprimand David, he read away Chatasi Lashem. There, no, uh, there was no games like, like, like uh, Shaw played, you know, Naftar Parsa Zachar. So once you understand what a king is, that the gather of a king is, that he is bottled to the Abishar, and therefore he has to listen to everything the Abishar says, and, over, and the Yidin are bu- uh, bottled to him, by Shaul, we realize the exact opposite, that he was not bottled to the Abishar, he was bottled to the people, so he lost his mandate. There's nothing... Um, he wasn't bottled. What? He wasn't bottled. He yeah. himself was king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is a sad thing, because Shaul was a very derhebin, a person, and a big tzaddik. But um, actually, that... Uh, once we finish the member, we'll probably uh, we'll understand this. But it doesn't say the member. Other, I don't remember. Where I sing. I sing it somewhere. That because the Yidin's request for the king wasn't proper, as we'll see. So therefore, the request was fulfilled by someone who was also. In other words, they weren't looking for someone who's bottled to the Eivister. That was Kachal Agayim Eshes They wanted a, a, a king like all the nations. So they got the person who Taka wasn't a Shlemos in that area because based on based on their request. Anyway, so that's reason number one for having a king. Reason number two. V'eidyesh tam pasha b'mini melech. B'mini melech was another simple reason to be a king. She'yanin yesha am k'roi, that he should uh, lead the nation properly. He, as it says in Pirkei Avis, ki l'mali meira isha sh'eyu chayim b'loi. Without the king... Without, without, without the, the fear of government, every person would eat up their neighbor alive. In other words, because by, everyone has their own biases and everyone has their own, uh, their own interests, and that brings conflict. So you need the person, the, the government on top, to uh, ensure law and order. The Pasuk tells us that the king, through his mishpat, he upholds the land, to make sure that the tzaddik is, is, uh, is vindicated, and to incriminate the Russia. So these are the two reasons for having a king, and one of them obviously is uh, we share with all the nations of the world, and one of them is unique to Klal Yisrael. So what do you think Shmuel was upset about? You're ready in your, in your mind, you're already figuring it out. He's upset that they wanted a king only for Second reason, and not for the front. That's what we would think, but that's not what the Samus is going to say. Both of these reasons why to be mana a king, do not apply to the Talmud Chacham. Only the Ami Aretz needed for both reasons, not only. Well, we're going to see that Shmuel was disappointed that they wanted a king even for the higher reason. Because both of these reasons are not necessary for Talmud Chacham. When it comes to Neshamas Yisrael, yes, base minim. There are two different types of Neshamas. Echad, teach Kufches. Echad, one of them. Oisan she'enan Talmud Chacham. Those who are not Talmud Chacham, v'heim reikanim metayra v'chachma. They are empty of Torah and Chachma. V'afal pikein and still him leim mitzvus. They're filled with filled with mitzvus. They're uh, careful not to do any sur miran, not to do any avedis, not to do the mitzvahs. They're even, you know, even careful to uh, every mitzvah the rabbana. And where does this, where, where does this come from? This is a reflection of the, the, their spiritual composition of the neshamas, the way it comes from above. 
שאינו רואה לקבל בתוכוי בכינס תירה וחכמה. They're not really able to be mekabal Torah and wisdom. They're not be bechines ma'isa bava. But they, they, uh, their main isuk is an ma'isa. Ukumei she'anu royim ba'lil, as we see very clearly, she'ash kama anashim shalom dem yitzolav. The many people learn it by a teacher. Miyad b'tziyas mimenu. As soon as they leave the rav, manichem ha Torah, they leave the Torah behind. Meshakchim alah, and they forget it. Ki'ilu lehoya, as if it never was. And instead of a iskim bechayu elam haza, so that's one level of neshamas. Neshamas of those who are not talmidei chachamim. Babei is the second level of neshamas. In neshamas hagvoye is the high neshamas. Oisan shein talmidei chachamim. But as we're going to see over here soon, that the tzemach tzedek's definition of a talmud chacham is much much higher and greater than what we would normally define as a talmud chacham. In other words, most of the people who you know and who you might define as talmidei chachamim probably. Fall under the category number one. So again, Eishan Shein Talmidei Chachamim Balei Torah Hamaskilim B'Chachmas Hashem that understands Hashem's wisdom of Torah. So Yehagu Yemim V'Laila and they study Torah day and night. The Hinei Lifi Beis Hatayim Hanal based on both reasons that we just gave reasons for why we need a king. On Umeitzim, we find Shanashamis Apshutes, the simple souls. Hein Levad at Shrichim Lamelech, Lamelech Shiyanik Eisim Kedoy. They're the only ones that need a king. Al Pitam Habes. Let's talk about uh, the second reason. The second reason, which is that we, we need a king because uh, for practical purposes uh, to maintain. Law and order. The person who's tirasim and asli, we deva ask me himself knows. Ha aser va muter, va kill baru like kishemesh, and everything is clear to him. The ein sarach leimer she bevadai who tzadik obviously that he's a tzadik v'lo yase bezodin. He certainly won't do an aveir on purpose. Gistam tamad chacham u'yir shemayim. You know, the average tamad chacham u'yir shemayim. Hari eni tzarach lemelach klal. Such a person doesn't need a melach. Rak. Such a person, it's enough that there's a Navi or a Shaifadik and a Shaifadik Shmuel, meaning someone who is able to transmit from Hashem messages, you know, because that, that's uh, a Navi is a vehicle through which Hashem transmit timely messages. So that a Talmud Chacham will need. But the simple king for the simple the, the established law and order, that's not needed. So obviously, we're talking about a Talmud Chacham, a real Talmud Chacham. I mean, we know that many Talmud Chacham today who. Uh, if there was no Ilmali, Mira, Ishas Reu Chaim Balay would apply to them also. But we're talking about, as we'll see soon, someone with Taka, a high Nishama. We're talking about great Sadikim over here. Great Sadikim don't need a Melech for the first reason. Second. For the second reason. But it's okay. only if there will all be great Nishamas. Correct. It would be a world of great Nishamas. Correct. Right? Or I'm saying it's someone who's at Sadik. Great Sadik needs it. To protect them. Forget him. Okay. And even the first reason of the bitl, that the reason why we need a king is because through the agency of a king, Klal Yisrael is battle to Hashem. This also is only shaykh to those that are Tamil they are yesh, they are uh, metzius, they are, uh, yesh is one of the hardest words to translate. There's no, I think that society is so, is so yeshish that they don't even have a word to define it, that's just a normal state of being. Yesh means ego, yeah, that's probably the best word. Yeah, they're yesh, they have an ego, they are metzius. Th- these are those who are not tamidich hachamim. And this is because of the source above, as we'll see soon. This is because the neshamas come from a lower level. And that's why they're not tamidich hachamim. Okay, so here's the tzamasad is going to tell us when we're talking about the tamid chacham, we're not talking about. It's not only about how much knowledge you have. The reason why we call it a tamid chacham and the word chacham, as we know, chsidus chachma is that. Um, Exemplifies the idea of bitl, and that's why chachma is made up of the words koyachma, which means the the faculty of of bitl. 
And that's what differentiates Torah ultimately from all other from all other all other yeah, all other wisdoms, all other chachmas. And that is an other chachmas. How do you gain Torah? How do you gain the chachma? So the smarter you are and the higher IQ you have, so the more of a keli you are for that chachma. In Torah, because Torah is be'etzam, the chachma of Hashem, the way to be mekabel Torah is by being batal Tashem. And as long as you're a yes, you'll never, as much as you learn, it never, it never permeates you and you never really get it. And also, you'll never get the emes of Torah. And that's why, and we have, it's interesting, but the have halacha, and in Gemara says, in Shechtas Erevin, that there's, a, you know, obviously machlik is between Bishama and Bishilom. And the halacha is according to Bishilom. Why is the halacha according to Bishilom? So what does the Gemara say? What? Shammai is mechad ditfei. Shammai was sharper. They were, they were, they were smarter, Pasha. And Allah is like Bishilom. And why is that? What is Manazah? Yeah. But why, and why is Allah like Bishilom? The Gemara says, Meteich she noichin va'aluvin hen. Are they and because they were noichin, they were easygoing, va'aluvin, and they were uh, humble, humble people. In fact, and then, as the Mishnah says over there, that they even were makdimin dimri b'shamay to their own words. When we learn the Mishnah, b'shamay always comes before b'shilom, if you notice. And why is that? Because the Mishnah we have is from b'shilom. In other words, the transmission ultimately went to the Talmudim of Hilal. And because in b'shilom, when they would learn a halacha, they would say b'shamay emin like this, and b'shilom, and they would say b'shamay's opinion before they would say their own opinion. That's how, that's how humble they were. As opposed to b'shamay, who b'chal... They weren't good as Bishil. In other words, they would say they wouldn't say Bisham Bishil, they would say only the halacha as uh, as they understood it. And Bishil, not only did they include Bishamai, but they even put them before they put themselves. Aluvin. Sorry? Aluvin. But it's a, it's a strange thing. No, no, Aluvin was Oh, it doesn't that what? It doesn't make sense that the Allah should be according to you because be, because you're uh, more humble. Let's imagine if you have two mathematicians who are fighting over a chavis, uh, and you say, oh, this one's smarter, but this one's more humble. Okay, so this one's right. This guy's right because he's more humble. Taka doesn't make sense. And if you're talking, talking about uh, Taka Chachma, which is not Chachma Satayra, then Taka doesn't make sense. But since Taira, we know, is Ba'atsam higher than our Asaga, the fact that we can relate to Taira, understand Taira, is, makes no sense. Bifrat, you know, after we learned the last memory, which we, we, but we're, what Teira is? The Teira is the Makir Rishaydus of all the worlds, and the hard way where, where Teira comes from. And that's why it says, you know, that's why Teira is Nimshlo Lamai. Teira is compared to water. Why is the water a metaphor for Teira? So the Gemara says in time, it's the Ma, the Ma Maim Yedim Makim Gavayel and Makim Namuch. Just like water comes down from a high place to a low place, it's the same thing Teira also. As Alter Rebbe says, it came down from its place, but it's, it's, it remains, that's the miracle of Torah, that we have the ability to understand something which is be'etzem, entirely higher than Chachma Sarita. We spoke about it, we also we spoke about it in which manner, I think it's Tzitzis. How there's the Chachma, which is in Bria, right? And there's the Chachma, which is in Gansan, higher than Bria, which is Chachma Satera. So the fact that we can understand Torah in itself is mind-boggling. But how do we become a keli for Torah? Not by being smarter, by being more bottled. Because the less Messias you are, the more you're about to the Abish, the more you're Kaili to the Kabul Chachma Vasham. Which is why the Pashta, the Pashta, um, meaning Al Treb and Tanya, he says, Ma Maim Yerdun Makam Gweil and Makam Namok. So Tayyar also comes down from a high place to low place. But if you look in the Gemara in Tainus, where that's from, what the meaning over there is that Tayyar is miskayim by someone who's an Anav. Just like water always collects in the lowest place. So Tayyar, which is like water, it always collects in the lowest place. If you have a room over here, you poured water on the floor, where would the water settle? If there was one place where there was a hole, the water would all go over there. Teiro also, where is it attracted to? To the lowest place, to the one who is the most, the biggest ana. And that's why someone who learns Teiro is a Tamad Chacham. The idea has the idea of Chachma, is the idea of Bittl. So therefore, someone who is a Tamad Chacham is already Batl Tashem, and therefore doesn't need a Melech, as he's going to say. Valkane, and therefore, that's why the Pasuk says, Kol Gei Shoita, that all high places is Shtus, because being high and being arrogant is the opposite of Chachma, the opposite of Bittl. From Chachma, Yashis doesn't come out of Chachma. 
Therefore, the Amaya Aretz, they need a king. Kedeshi is Batlu Bitlayash. So that they should have Bitlayash, Kibitla Evet Lefneha Melech. Like the Bitla of Evet, I can Kamesha Kasim, same Tasim Melech and Melech. Familiar with the, there's, in the Chsidus, there's a difference between Bitl Hayash and Bitl Bimitsias. Bitl Hayash describes a Bitl which is, I am a Mitsias and I'm a Mevatl myself to a Mitsias that's greater than me than higher than me. I feel myself to be something. And Bitl Bimitsias is that Ich bin garnished, I'm a Mamish garnished. Not that I feel myself that I'm a Mitsias, but there's a Mitsias that's greater than me, but the knowledge that the uh, Einarich, I'm Mamish nothing. So the Talmud, the Chachamim, they're bitl b'metzias, l'gabi Hashem. They don't need a king. However, the people who are not the Talmud, the so they need al kapanim the melech. To the melech, they have bitl hayesh. In other words, as the pasuk says, soim tos melech I am taking, I'm accepting the morus, the kingship, on me, which is obviously bitl hayesh, not bitl b'metzias. And through that, they're battle to Hashem. Shari Melech battle to Hashem. Avlo Neshama Sagvo is but a high. Battle to Hashem of Bittul And through them being battle, Bittul Hayash, so then they're Bittul Hamela battle to Hashem. Avlo Neshama Sagvo is in the Quran Tamid Chachamim, but in the high Nisham is the call of Tamid Chachamim. He be beginning as Bittul Mitzad Etzem Sharshim Lamaila. Ki Ezo Chacham Harayis Anelad. What is the name of Yavis that a Chacham is Harayis Anelad? Why is that connected to 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 Chachma Reis and Eilon? Shachachma ibechines riyam. What is Chachma? Where does Bittel come from? When you look and you see Sheroyech and Eilon Ma'ayin Liyash, how you see how every moment you have been created from nothingness. On the Chadish bechol yimaisim bereishis, and how the Eibush does Mechadish at every day and every moment yimaisim bereishis. Ezo Chacham, how do you become Bittel Reis and Eilon? Because when you realize. That, that the concept of perpetual creation, you realize that you're nothing. And if you could be royal that, if you could take it, see that. In other words, seeing like you see uh, something physical, if that can be, become part of you have the ear and that, then you realize that you take have no mitzvahs. <clears throat> I mean, we've spoken about this in the past, right? The fact that the Abishter creates, the, the, uh, recreates creation every moment, what that means is, is that creation doesn't have any mitzvahs. Of its owner. There's no independent Mitzvah. We've spoken about this in the past, right? Who can muscle it if you throw the stone, right? right. Mm-hmm. Well, the stone isn't flying. It's not a flying stone. It's not a flying stone, right? The stone is, uh, so that when you, if you could be, if you're a Chacham, if you're Reya San Noilad, if you realize well, every moment you're being recreated, that gives you a bit of the Mitzvah. But the important part of here is the Reya. Is there, yeah, because if it's something that I just, uh, yeah, I've heard about it and I, I understand it, but it's not something that I can mamish, it becomes emes. <clears throat> These high neshamas are called, you know, they're called achim or reim, brothers or friends of the king, ebonim. They don't need a king at all. They don't need a king through which to have bitl hayash. That you don't need a king before whom to be like an avid before the king. By themselves already. They're battled to Hashem, a bit that's higher than higher than bit layash. And therefore, it's very interesting. You can say over here, Tamidi Chachamim are higher than Malachim. Malachim need a king. Malachim have a king. In other words, they have to be Mekabal Hashem as a king. Because a malach has an ego, a malach is a metzius, it's a holy metzius, a bertaka metzius. Even the mechal of Gavriel, respectively, when mechal is avon, Gavriel is yira, they are metzius for themselves, yare, Hashem ve'oyavoy, the metzius that fears Hashem, a metzius that loves Hashem. Alkain and therefore Yashalei and Melach, they are Mekabel Hashem as a king. As opposed to, the, sorry, the Chenu and Neshamis the Biyak Canal. The same thing as all the Neshamis of of Bria Yitzira and Asiya. So I remember earlier in the beginning when he described the Talmud Chacham versus Sami Aretz, you thought it was you know the people who sit in Kailul versus the people who go to work. But I already warned you at that time that's not Mamish the Nakuda. 
He's the, 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 at Talmud Chacham, what he's saying is someone who's an Hashem Adatzilus. An Hashem Adatzilus is an Hashem which, even as it comes down here into this world, um, is absolutely bebitl b'metzias to Hashem. Av Hashem is agoyis, k'mei nishmas Rashbi, who we're talking about, like Hashem the Rashbi, or ki yitzvah mechines banim, they taka, they don't, there's no machus chamachus k'elam, they're, they're sons of the Ebishter. The idea of a king is a bit like Yashu, heim l'maylo b'chines geder kabbalah samalach basar v'adam, Shalmata, they were completely above and beyond uh, having to accept a Melech Basar Vadam. That's only for Eved. The Hainu should have a Nifred Canal. But not on a Ben. In other words, is it, to put it in different words, the Nishamas of, 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 of Atsilus are called Banim Lamakim. And the Nishamas of, 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 of Bri Yisir Asiya, they're called Avadim. So a Eved needs Bitla Yash, and he needs the agency also of a human king in order to be battled to Hashem. But those high Nishamas, like Rajbi, or those are Tirasi and Manasseh, Nishamas Datsilos, they're Banwa Makim, they don't need a human king. Shari Afilo, Elef Banim, Le Yikari of Melech. Even if a father were to have a thousand kids, he is not called a king over them. He's their father. Kihem, those Nishamas from Bechin Satsilos, they're from Matsilos, Shualakus Mamish. Ayn Beir, Beir, Beis, Mrs. Elo. Mitzvah, Membez, Peter Bez, what's Membez? Not sure. One of the mitzvahs over here. <coughs> okay, and therefore, the Ratzah Shmuel, Hamlach Aleyem Melech. Shmuel did not want the Eden to have a king. Ki Ratzah, Sheyi Ukul Madrega Zu. He wanted to be Maila the Eden all to this level. Va Ozla Yit Starukul Melech, Basar Vadam. That was his, so that, and that's why he was so upset, and that's why the Abish was so upset because he was hoping that he would be able to bring the Yidden to uh, this higher Madriga to the point they don't need a king. And I guess Hashem was also disappointed. That should have been at least the aspiration of the Yidden. Why are the Yidden coming and clamoring and asking for a king? They should aspire to Madriga where they don't need a king. Right. It's not a choice. I hear. I hear what you're saying. It's a good question. I have to look and see if they talk about that. Um, maybe it's something you could be megala. Maybe that's something you know. It talks about also. Meisha Rabbeinu had a similar thing. It talks about this. Meisha, when he said um, he wanted to be pale in the Yidden to have re'iyah in Alakus. And he wasn't able, he wasn't successful. Instead, it was only an Ephraim of Shmir, which is similar to what we're talking about over here. So it seems that there is a possibility, somehow or other, to be Maila and Neshama. Because ultimately, when we're saying that we're Neshama Datsilus, every one of us has a Neshama that, come, that originates in Datsilus. The only thing is that it comes down, Madrega la Madrega, and the Halam is Vahesterim on it. Is it possible to remove this Halam is Vahesterim? So I guess that's what Shmuel was trying to accomplish. But I, I, I want to look into that a little more and see if uh, anyone talks about it. And this is why we say Avinu Malkeinu. Why do we say Avinu Malkeinu? Beis Abichinis Uavinu Emrim Chatanu. I'm not sure exactly what he's referring to over here. I looked at other places, no one really gave explanation. Is there ever a place where we say Avinu Malkeinu Chatanu Pashanu? He's saying over here the Chatanu is 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 Mosiachas to Avinu. The Pashanu is Malkeinu. I think that he means Pasha that in the course of the Avinu Malkeinu, we say the words Chatanu, we say the words Pashanu. When we say Chatanu, that's talking about Avinu. We say Pashanu, it's talking about Malkeinu. But Avinu, regarding Avinu, Emim Chatanu, the Chet Hainu Meshgaga, a Chet is something which is done by mistake. Uvu Malkeinu, Emim Pashanu, Uvu Pashia Hainu Bezad, because someone who is the Madriga of Ben is not shy to do an Avera Bemezid. Are you going to say even Meshigik has a track to do an Avera? Someone is a Madriga in the Shaman Datsilos, but I guess Akapanam Lagabi Madriga Soi, David Amalach. You can make a mistake, Lagabi, your Madriga, but it's only a mistake because the gather of Peshia, the gather of Bezodin, that's not Shaykh by a Neshama, which is Matzilos. So, what did we answer? We did answer why Shmuel was upset that they wanted a king. We did answer why um, Hashem was upset. What we didn't answer is what's wrong with them? They did the pale, there's a mitzvah to ask for a king. And why would the Abishra give us a mitzvah if he's disappointed in it afterwards? Though, Sorry? For this reason they asked for. But he doesn't say that. Right. He doesn't say that. At least not yet. Oh, yeah. Not yet. In other words, 
know. we did. We, we're going to get there. We're going to get there later. Why the wives was upset about that? But the vaila, we understand why Yidin in their ideal state lechayder shouldn't get a king. That's going to change afterwards, by the way, because ultimately when Mashiach comes, we're going to be in an ideal state. And we will have a king. So we're going to find out there's a higher madriga and a king also. But we are right now, at least on a simple level, we understand why Shmuel was, was disappointed, why Hashem was disappointed. He was hoping that the Yidin would aspire to the higher madriga where they have a bitl b'metzias on their own and they don't need to have a malach basar v'adam. And we'll continue with Hashem sometime next week. I guess stay tuned for exactly one that will be.